Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, listen to this message. Uh, have a message every Tuesday. And if you have a question or a comment about this particular message or anything in particular that you would like my input with, uh, just go to the ministry website, robinbromfield.com. There go to the contact page. And on that contact page, you can leave me a question or a comment and I'll get it and get back to you. Also on that ministry website, uh, I have a unique book uh, uh, there that you can read a little bit about and find out a little bit more detail about. It is unique because it is written from a Christian perspective on change. It's called Conquering the Inevitable because change is something that is inevitable. We experience change every day. And the reason it is unique, it's the only book on change from a biblical perspective. Like I said, the title of the book is called Conquering the Inve Inevitable, but the subtitle, based on uh, insights from Nehemiah, gives a little bit of what it's about. Today, we're going to look at change as well. You see, passivity is a sure formula to kill your abundant living. All you have to do is sit back and do nothing. And the world will conform you into its mold as quick as a bolt of lightning. This happens with person after person until all of society fits nicely in its mold. And that's what the world wants you to do, is to look like them, to talk like them, to think like them. They don't want you to be any different. They want you to be a cookie-cutter image of themselves. You see, for the Christian, that mold is actually traditionalism. You see, traditionalism says that rituals rich in rules and regulations is how you must worship. Traditionalism tells us to do this and to do that, which are not specifically mentioned in Scripture. It's someone's interpretation. It's someone's desire, what they would like for you to do, but yet... It is not founded on scripture itself. You see, to combat traditionalism, you must take a bold stand against it. If you don't take a bold stand, they will make you be conformed and you will be just like everybody else and not different. If there's one thing for sure, God likes different things. Just look at the animal kingdom. And even within humanity, each individual looks completely different than everybody else. God is a God that, that loves diversity and he loves change. We're going to turn our attention uh, today to Luke chapter 5. So if you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 5. If you looking at it on a Bible app, just turn to that app if you would, please, because the Word of God is really what we want to center our attention around. See, as we look at that particular chapter, the Pharisees and scribes criticized Christ for eating with tax collectors and sinners. In other words, they tell Christ, how could you, being a holy man, a righteous man, that you claim to be, how could you even associate with such scum of the earth, is basically what they are saying. Well, Christ responds with words, uh, telling them that a well person does not need a physician, but a sick person does. Well, they won't let up, and you've probably been there too. You are living the Christian life, and an unbeliever uh, will begin to question you and, and they'll question you and you answer them. And, and just about the time you answer and you give them a, a biblical answer, 
then what do they do? They, they hit you with another question. That's exactly what these Pharisees and scribes are doing to Jesus. You see, they complain that John the Baptist disciples fast and the Pharisees disciples fast, but Jesus' disciples do not fast. So why, why is that, Christ, that, that you're the only ones that don't fast? Well, Christ tells them that as long as the bridegroom is with them, they do not fast. And then he goes on from there to tell them a parable. And we see this parable in Luke chapter 5, verses 37 to 39. I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says this in verse 37. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. Verse 38. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Then verse 39. And no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new. For he says, the old is better. Here it shows how the old and new are incompatible with it. Uh, if you're going to have the, the old, um, you can't have the new. And if you're going to have new, you have to move away from the old. It requires change is what Jesus is telling us that we need to have change in our lives. That new wine placed in old wineskins destroys the wine and the wineskins. You cannot put new wine of the gospel into the old wineskins of the Pharisaic Judaism. You see, history shows us that Christianity, mixed with any other religion whatsoever, removes Christianity from the newness that it should bring. The old traditionalism of Judaism was too brittle for Christ's teaching. Christ was teaching a ministry of grace and of diversity. And the Jews were preaching, everybody's got to look the same, talk the same, uh, be the same. You see, Judaism could not embrace the good news of Christ's grace. And in verse 38, emphasizes the need to put that new gospel of Christ into daily practice. And we need to put this new wine of Christ's grace into our daily activities. Our daily activities need to be such that we are living the word of grace. Two truths worth living come out of this study today. First, God is a God of freshness and change. <laughs> it should be evident as we look at the animal kingdom and even us as individuals, we're all different. So he desires to have diversity and to allow for change. But God himself does not change. The scriptures say is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. But yet, you are to make all things new in your life, which requires you to do some changing in your life. You see, the Old Testament talks about a new song, a new heart, and a new covenant. And the New Testament talks about a new birth, a new creature, and a new heaven, and a new earth, teaching us that we need to have change in our lives, that we need to embrace God's grace. You are to embrace the new by embracing God's grace. And by his grace, that means that things that 
are not specifically uh, told or talked about in scripture, that we need to have flexibility. We, we need to have diversity. And, and then the second thing that this truth worth living tells us is that new wineskins are essential, not optional. You've got to have new wineskins. You see, you were tempted to forsake Christ's grace. You're, you're tempted to fall away and just conform to the way that everybody else is doing things. That's the easy way. That's the, the, the way that a lot of people act. And most people that react that way, those people are just maintainers. They just want to maintain. They, they don't want anything to change. They, they, they want everything to stay the same. And you can probably hear that from some older people. They'll say, well, I wish for the good old days. <laughs> In other words, I don't like change. I don't want change. And, and that's why they propose grace and, and cling to traditionalism. They oppose grace and cling to traditionalism because it's just maintaining things the way they always have been. Let me ask you a question. Are you flexible? Do you allow change to happen? Do you fight change? Do, do you like things the way they are and you don't want things to change? You, you just want things to always be the same? Well, if you are fl flexible, that's good. But if not, Let's start today to be someone that is flexible, that allows for change and does that. And are you open to change? If not, then try to be open to change. And are you available to God changing the direction of your life? If not, start today. Maybe God is telling you to lead a Bible study. Or maybe he's telling you that you need to have a daily devotional every day and you need to make that a priority or to give more or to sing in the choir or to be more faithful in your church attendance. Maybe get more involved in your church. Whatever that changes in your life, let Christ lead you in that direction. And then lastly, change your life to live by Christ's grace and not by a list of rules telling you the do's and don'ts of daily living, not supported by Scripture. Don't let others tell you the kind of music you need to listen to, or, or the way that you uh, need to dress if it is well-pleasing to Christ, or, or the kind of automobile that you need to drive. Things that scripture is silent about, don't let others try to tell you that you need to act a certain way or look a certain way, you need to have a certain haircut and need to wear certain clothes to church. All those type of things live by grace, not by the traditionalism of men. Let us pray. Father, help us to Latch on to grace, Lord. Grace tells us that we're saved by grace and that you experience grace in our lives, Lord. Help us to cling to that and not to be maintainers, trying to look a certain way, act a certain way, because everybody else does that when it's not supported in Scripture. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. I, I have another broadcast uh, next Tuesday. And so until then, I, I just hope you have a great, great week.